All right, today I wanna to talk about creating a custom live stream countdown for your church. Man, I left my coffee in the other room. Hey man, uh, I oh. think this is yours. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Well, now we can get started. It's <sighs> good stuff. All right, so today I want to talk about countdown videos and how you can make your own customized specifically for your church. This countdown video will work for in-person services, but also for live streams. In fact, later in this video, I'll show you actually how I took our live stream countdown and altered it to create an in-person version. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through every step of the process. And if you're interested in just a certain part of the process, then feel free to skip around in the timestamps below. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first step of creating a countdown video. So first off, talking about the software that I used, I used Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects to create the countdown. I first used After Effects to create the clock and then I did the rest of it in Premiere Pro. But if you don't wanna even mess with After Effects at all, I actually have a link where you can download a five minute countdown clock that you can then overlay onto the rest of your countdown video. So you don't even need to open After Effects and you don't need to create one yourself. If you're interested in that, the link will be in the description below. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into After Effects here and start working on this countdown timer. So this is actually the project where I created the countdown originally. You can see here it started as 15 minutes and then I kind of trimmed it down to a five minute countdown and things like that. So you can do any time that you want. You can do five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, what have you, whatever you prefer to do. Now let's go ahead and look at actually how to create this countdown yourself. So first thing, go ahead and create a new composition. Come up to composition at the very top and then hit new composition. Name the composition, whatever you want. Uh, use whatever resolution you want, 1920 by 1080 probably is what you want. For frame rate, I would do 24 frames a second or 23.976 to be specific. And then under duration, I would set that for whatever length you want your countdown to be. So if you want your countdown to be a 10 minute countdown, I would set it for 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna take out that 30 right now. This is 30 seconds. So I'm gonna make this timeline 10 minutes in length and then I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so here's our new composition. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click over here in the layers section. I'm gonna hit new and then text. And then I'm going to just type out a zero colon and zero zero. I'm gonna come over to the paragraph tab on the right hand side here and I'm gonna make sure this is center text. Then I'm gonna come over to the align tab and I'm going to align this horizontally and then also align this vertically. Uh, if you don't see any of these here on the right hand side, just make sure to go to window and then look in the little drop down there. You should probably be able to find those. All right, so then next we're gonna come up to the effects and presets tab. I'm going to search for an effect that is called slider control. So there it is, I already searched for it. So I'm gonna click and drag that onto my text layer. Now that we've dropped that onto our text layer, I'm going to click on the little drop down menu right here on my text layer. And then I'm going to hit the drop down menu under text. And then I'm gonna look at this source text right here. And there should be a drop down menu right next to the source text. If for whatever reason it's not showing up, you can click on this little swirly thing right here, click on that, and the drop down menu should appear now. So I'm gonna click on that. This is now where it actually gets a little bit more complicated. I'm going to basically edit the code that is giving this text instructions on how to operate. So I'm basically gonna drop in um, a line of code that basically tells this text to act like a countdown timer. So I actually have the line of code that you can copy and paste yourself if you want to. So if you wanna copy and paste this text yourself and create this countdown yourself, you can with that code that is in the description below. But if you don't wanna do that, like I said before, the link is also in the description below if you wanna download the actual countdown that you can just overlay onto your footage in Premiere Pro or something like that. So either way, both those things are down in the description below. So now where to paste that code is we're gonna click right here on this little bit of text right here. Um, and then I'm gonna delete that text and then I'm going to paste that line of code in there. So if I double click on this and open it up, there it is, that's the whole thing. So it's in there and I can click away now and it's good to go. So now it's basically telling um, this text to act like a countdown. So now we can close that whole drop down menu. So I'm gonna click text and just close that down. And then I'm gonna come over to effects and I'm gonna open up that drop down menu 
and there is our effect that we just dropped in slider control i'm going to open that up and so now we just create a couple keyframes so i'm going to start at the very end of the timeline i'm going to come all the way over here to the end of the timeline and i'm just going to click on the little stopwatch next to the slider drop that keyframe down and then I'm gonna come back to the very beginning of our timeline. Then I'm gonna come over to the little value next to slider and I'm just gonna click and drag this up until I get to the desired amount of time, which is 10 minutes, what we set this timeline to be. So I'm gonna drag it and there we go, 10 minutes, um, which is 600 in slider value here. Um, but there you go. So now if I hit play, the countdown is just ticking away. And this is why it's important to create your timeline to whatever length of time you want it to be. So that's pretty much it for After Effects. Now it's time to just export that out. So I'm gonna go up to composition and then I'm gonna go down to add to render queue and click on that. I'm going to go into the settings a little bit here and click on this output module. I'm gonna click on lossless right here. Open this up. There are a couple settings that you need to change. First under channels right here, I'm gonna change this from RGB to RGB plus alpha. Then I'm going to go down to color and I'm going to click straight unmatted and I'm going to hit okay. Then just choose where you're gonna output this to. So I'm gonna hit output to, I'm gonna click on that. Then I'm going to choose a location to export this file to. So then the last thing to do is just to hit render. Then once it's done rendering, you have it to use in your countdown. All right, so now let's talk about what's actually going in your countdown video. So we have our countdown timer. Now we need to fill the countdown with some kind of material, whether that's B-roll video that you've taken around your church or motion graphics or regular graphics, anything like that. You need to compile all of that and put that together in a folder that you can actually access and then have with you when you create this video. So this is a real quick rundown of the folder structure and everything that I have in our video. So this is the main folder and this is everything that I have in there. I have assets, which was just miscellaneous things that I might have wanted to try. I don't think I ended up using anything from here. Then I have motion backgrounds. I have B-roll. So this is all clips from around our church. I basically went through all of our old footage and found anything that I might want to use, whether that's uh, interviews that we did, testimony videos that we did, or just random B-roll that we've shot around the church over the years, even video from old projects, different things like that. And I just, anything that I thought I might use, I just copied and I pasted it into this folder. So it's just a big uh, folder full of clips and b-roll and things like that and we'll sort through those here in a second once we get into premiere this countdown video is actually a talking head video that we shot of the pastor that is going to be then put into the live stream countdown the pastor then addresses the people watching via the live stream every single week so that's a nice thing to add as well we'll look at that in closer detail a little bit later then here we have some still graphics and music which this music you need to make sure especially for the live stream countdown that you have the license to play this music or it's royalty free or something like that. Um, I got this music from Soundstripe because they're fairly inexpensive and uh, they have a decent selection of music for the price. So I licensed these songs and now we can use them in this live stream video. And then we have overlays, which is just the countdown that we exported from After Effects. I put it in this folder. We have project files where we have our Premiere and our After Effects project files. That's where I save those. Then lastly, a renders folder where we export the videos that we create in Premiere to this folder. So we have those. So now opening up Premiere, this is what my project actually looks like. I have a couple sequences here. I have my B-roll sequence. I have an in-person countdown sequence. I have a live stream sequence and then an outro that I made as well. To end the live stream off, I made an outro video. So first, let's take a look at the B-roll sequence that we have here. So right here, this is all the clips that I may or may not have ended up using for the live stream countdown. So if you're gonna use uh, B-roll and you're gonna use random clips that you've shot around the church, what I would do, this is a pro tip, don't go through the folders and just kind of find the right in and out points for the cl each clip and then drag it onto the timeline that way. What I would suggest doing is taking all the footage. So I'm just going to grab this whole B-roll folder and I'm going to click and drag everything onto the timeline here. And you can see we got a lot of footage here that I got to sort through. But here's where things speed up quickly. Instead of sorting through all those folders, trying to find a clip, trying to find your in and out points and things like that. All you have to do is play through the timeline and use keyboard shortcuts to choose the in and out points of each clip. So if I'm going through this footage and I want to use this clip and I want to start the clip right here, all I have to do is press Q on my keyboard and it's going to trim everything off of the front of that clip. So I'm going to hit Q 
it's gonna trim everything off the front of that clip. Then if I wanna play it a little bit more, and then I want to end the clip right here. All I have to do then is hit W on my keyboard and it's gonna trim everything after that on this clip. Boom. And just like that, that clip is trimmed and it has just the exact points that I want to use for that shot. So if I keep going here, I'm gonna use this one. Maybe I'm gonna wait, I'm going to, I wanna start it right here. So I'm gonna hit Q and then I'm gonna keep going and I wanna cut it right here. So I'm gonna click W, boom, just like that. What if you want a couple different clips from one single recorded video? Then right here, I actually changed the keyboard shortcut for this one. I changed it to add edit to my X key. So then all I have to do is hit X on my keyboard and it makes a cut in the middle of the clip. So for example, if I wanna use this shot right here, I'm gonna hit Q, I'm gonna cut the beginning, but then I wanna use just that much, but I wanna use the rest of this clip as well for something else, then I can hit X and it'll add a cut right there. And then I can choose a new beginning point for the rest of this clip. So I can choose a new beginning point there and then choose the end point for the rest of that clip. So then I have two different clips from that one larger clip with the exact in and out points that I want for those shots. And then just go and do that for every clip that you have on your timeline. Kind of a little bit of a tangent there, but that's a much faster way to get through a lot of footage very quickly. I did that for all of these clips that I dropped here in this timeline, and I ended up with all this footage right here that I can use. So all of this is usable footage that I can just drop into our countdown video and it's all uh, good looking footage. It's not the shaky stuff. It's not the um, shots where after I got the clip, I'm looking down, the camera's facing the floor. Um, it's all usable footage from this section. So that makes when I'm choosing B-roll clips, it makes it easier and faster to find what I want to use. So I just look through all the usable footage that I found and then I pick from that selection. All right, now let's actually look at the timeline and break this thing down. Let's start out with the live stream countdown because that's what I started out with and then I modified it for the in-person countdown from there. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go through the countdown here and just kind of explain what's happening along the way. All right, first, let's talk about the actual countdown timer. So we have our countdown timer that we either downloaded from the link in the description or you made it yourself in After Effects. So the first thing to do would be to drop that on the timeline. Then underneath it, I have a motion background that I got for free online somewhere. Um, I really don't remember where I ended up getting it, but there's a bunch of them out there that you could use. Then after that, I actually go to just some still graphics that we had, um, kind of calling people to action in the comments or inviting someone to watch the live stream. Uh, at this point, the reason I started with the motion graphic and then went to the still graphics here is just because I'm not using the B-roll yet because I figure most people are not watching. They haven't tuned in in the first 10 seconds of this countdown. So there's no reason to use the best footage that we have and all the B-roll and stuff like that. I'm gonna wait a little bit later in the video to start showing some of that footage. So I have a couple still graphics here talking about inviting someone to church. Let us know where you're live streaming, take a picture and tag us, fun stuff like that, and then how to give online. So I let those play for a few seconds each. And then here I go back to the motion graphic background and the timer up at the front. Then during those still graphics, I just move the countdown timer to the bottom corner there. So it's still there present. And then I just move it back up to the middle when I go back to the motion background. So now here's the point where I transition into the B-roll that I have to use. So the title text wipes off the screen and then I fade the countdown back to the center and I got this actually right here. All of this is basically a zoom transition that I downloaded. Again, I just found it online for free. It fit with the music. I don't you'd normally prefer weird transitions like this, but um, if you go and watch the full countdown video that I have linked below, you can see that it fits with the music really well. So I added that. I felt like it needed something to move into that B-roll uh, a little bit better. And it kind of works. It works pretty well. So then it moves into the countdown timer in the center of the screen and then B-roll playing underneath it. So a couple important things to note about this section where the B-roll is. So just to break down all these layers here, we have the countdown and then we have a black overlay. So basically what I realized when playing back this footage is that the text did not stand out enough from the B-roll to be very readable. And I kind of wanted the B-roll to be just kind of in the background in a sense where you could watch it and it would be entertaining to watch, but it's not uh, taking away from the countdown basically. So it just needed to, to be darkened up a little bit. So I made this black overlay to put 
down there just so that the time pops out a lot clearer. So that's what that does. If I toggle that on and off on a couple of these clips, you can see the difference. So the way I created this black overlay real quick, if you go into your project bin, all you have to do is come down to the bottom right corner, hit new item, and then come up to color mat, hit okay. And then choose what color you want, which is would be just black in this case, hit okay and then name it whatever you want, hit OK. So then just drag that layer onto your timeline. And then once you select it, go over to your effects controls up at the top left corner. All you have to do is then adjust the opacity of that layer to your liking, whatever works best for you. So right now I have my opacity of this layer at 70%. You can see if I change it, how it changes. So right now it's at 70%, that's what I landed on. All right, so moving on, these two adjustment layers right here are for color grading these clips. One of them is just a standard LUT that I applied to all the footage. And then the other one is just color and contrast tweaks that I did to certain groups of footage. And because there's a black overlay on top of this footage, the color grading stuff isn't as important as it would be if that was the prime focus was the video. But I went ahead and just kind of tweaked some of the colors just to try and make each clip, no matter when they were shot or what camera camera that was used or where the location was that we shot, um, they look as similar as possible color wise and color scheme and saturation and contrast wise. So those are what those two adjustment layers are doing. And then of course we have the footage um, down below. Also in the description, I have a link to the full countdown video if you want to watch the full thing front to back without me scrubbing through it. This B-roll just kind of continues to go on like this. And I just kind of ordered the clips in a way that I thought was a good sequence of ordering the shots and the footage and things like that. I went from, you know, like worship shots to preaching shots. Uh, to different things happening around the church from small groups to testimony videos um, to then kids ministry stuff to our other campuses things like that and basically i just compiled a wide variety of different shots and things so from kids ministry stuff to vbs to outreaches to worship to special events things like that i just compiled all this stuff and put it all together in a in an order in a sequence that i thought made sense and just kind of worked for the video so then here about the two minute mark i kind of switch it up just because if someone has been watching this for a while I just want to kind of keep it fresh so I kind of fade everything out here and then I go back to those still graphics for a second that I played at the beginning so people you know do you have a prayer request leave it in the comments invite someone to church or how to give those things I just put those still graphics there just again to switch things up and uh, give people an opportunity to comment or give things like that if they didn't see it the first time around when it played at the beginning of the video. Then from there we fade over and transition into the talking head video that we shot of the pastor addressing those who are watching online. So I fade the music down at this point and I have the talking head video which is only about a minute long or so. Um, with a couple motion graphics layered on top of that. And then at the end of that video, I fade it back into a couple shots of B-roll of worship and things like that, especially since we're about to start with worship. I figured um, some worship B-roll and footage would be appropriate right here. And then I also added on top for the last minute, the last 60 seconds, service will begin in however many seconds is left on the countdown. So I added that on top as well. The talking head video ends at exactly like the one minute mark. So then it's just 60 seconds of b-roll and then you get into the end of the countdown so the music fades back up at that point and then we have some more clips i ended on this one clip that i liked and i actually just held it out a lot longer so it's up there for like 10 seconds or so um, just to kind of sit there as it counts down and then it fades to black and that's the end of the countdown video. Also something that I didn't mention, but I transitioned songs at some point in the middle of it, just at a spot that I thought felt right and felt good. I wanted to have multiple songs in there just again, just to keep things fresh and interesting so they didn't feel like they were watching and listening to the same, you know, 30, 40 second loop on repeat for, you know, four or five minutes. So just something to keep it fresh and again, keep it a little bit more interesting to watch and listen to. So that's the entire breakdown of our live stream countdown. Now for the in-person one, I just copied and pasted everything that we did for the live stream one. The only difference really is that I did not keep the music. I muted the music because we'll play something else in person in the sanctuary. And then as well, I just cut out the video that was addressing the live stream audience, the talking head video. So instead in that place, I just had more of the welcome graphics. So literally just to keep it simple, 
I put this same title graphic that I played at the very beginning on here and I just left it up for, you know, about a minute, the same time amount of time that the talking head video was. And then again, transition into the ending that the service will begin in a few moments. So that's really the only difference there for the in-person to the live stream countdown is that I took out that talking head video addressing the online audience. And then finally, we can take a look at the outro video. So the outro video is again, I just kept it simple. I had a couple clips of B-roll that I wanted to use again. And then I had another title graphic that just says, thanks for tuning in, see you next week. And I played one of the intro songs that I used uh, for the countdown video underneath it and just let that run for 60 seconds and then again, fade to black in the video. That's it for the outro video. All right, so I think that about does it for breaking down our live stream countdown video and how you can create your own custom one for your church. I hope that makes sense. I hope nothing was too confusing there. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions about this entire process. Maybe I can do some more specific in-depth tutorials on certain aspects of this process in order to help you out in those specific areas. And of course, if you end up creating your own countdown video after watching this video, please send it to me. I'd love to see it. My email is there below. If you want to send me any of your videos that you end up doing, I'd love to see them. Uh, love to see what you guys are creating and what you guys are making. And of course, if you're looking for more videos to save you time and frustration of figuring out digital media all on your own, be sure to subscribe because I'll be making more videos like this in the coming weeks and months. Also, if you're looking for more personal and in-depth training and guidance, you can click a link in the description below where you can schedule a call with me personally, and you can check out some of our courses our courses that we have out now and our courses that are yet to come, uh, mainly involving shooting high quality video for your church, whether that's for shooting B-roll, testimony videos, or live streams, as well as you can pre-order a Pro Presenter Quick Start Guide course that will be coming out here soon. So if you're interested in any of that, the links are in the description below. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.